Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Chairperson, thank you very much. At the outset, let me join my leader, Musi Maimani, and the many other speakers who have congratulated the Honourable Mr. Cyril Ramaphosa on his election as our President. We join together with many other South Africans in celebration and look forward to the great hope and excitement that you have given us for a new dawn in South Africa. Who would have thought those few weeks ago when I told you you'd be packing up your office that you would indeed be packing up your office to move across the corridor at Tainhase. Congratulations. Speaker, we celebrate too the closing of the chapter on the Zuma presidency. We on the opposition benches do not share the sentiments of many of the ANC speakers today who have praised Zuma and thanked him for his service. The truth is that Zuma was bad for the country, bad for our democracy, bad for our constitution, and bad for our parliament, and frankly, we are delighted to see the back of him. For far too long, his countless acts of omission and commission sucked the oxygen out of our parliament. It suffocated the many important issues that we should have been discussing in this house. How to get South Africa working again, and most importantly, how to get South Africans back to work. We have to obsess about the nine million of our countrymen and women who do not have the dignity of work and have been pushed into the unemployment queues through bad policies. The millions of families who live in abject poverty and an education system that is failing our next generation miserably. We, as the official opposition, look forward to again, once again debating these issues of our time. We look forward to placing our offer unashamedly and our policy alternatives proudly before both this House and the people of South Africa. We look forward to engaging with all parties in the House on these issues. This is precisely what we should have been doing in this House, and these are the types of debates that we should be having. But it would be a mistake to ignore where we are today and how we got here. For as George Santayana, the famous philosopher, said, and I quote, those who do not learn history are doomed to repeat it, unquote. And that's why I do find it rather odd being on this precinct in the last week and listening to many of the speeches by ANC members here today, it struck me as odd, because I'm yet to come across a single ANC MP who actually supported Jacob Zuma. And this is odd, because this is the same Jacob Zuma who was slavishly protected and defended for the last eight years by the very people to the right, and who today cheer his demise. This is the same Jacob Zuma who despite being found guilty by the Constitutional Court of violating his constitution, was shielded by accountability by the same people to my right. It was the same Jacob Zuma who was saved every time by the ANC who protected him in the countless motions of no confidence where the opposition was doing its job to try and remove him. And listening to the ANC speakers today, it was very weird to see how many of them are trying to pretend that they are some new government that's just been elected into office. Not the same old hacks, zupters and hangers-on who've been in power for the last 24 years. The same party and government that has brought South Africa to its knees. And no matter how you try and rewrite history, you cannot reimagine what is public record. The ANC owned Jacob Zuma. Jacob Zuma owned the ANC. You created him, you enabled him, and you protected him. Many of us, many of us on the opposition benches had already raised our hand a long, long time ago. We wanted to be there. Of order, Speaker. Uh, honorable member, on what rule of the joint sitting? Rule, ni rule 92A. That's the point I'm making. Honorable member, that, uh, we are in a that, joint sitting. Yes, 92A speaks about the joint sitting, Speaker. Why no. is it difficult for Honourable, the to remove Patricia Dillon? Honourable Member, that's not a point of order. Please take your seat. We, we try and remove the people we're unhappy with within months. You've taken eight years. But while they were... And so we wanted to be there. We did raise our hand. We wanted to be there to expose and stop corruption, to prevent the abuse of the power, to be there for the poor and downtrodden, and we wanted to be there to vote out a corrupt president. But there were others in this House 
who did everything they could to push down our hands. And we doggedly continue to raise them. And we will continue to raise our hands for our people, for our country, for our constitution, and for our parliament. We must learn the lessons of how Zuma was able to capture the state, subjugate our parliament, and tame our institutions. One man could never wreak such devastation on his own. So while you set to work, Mr. President, on fixing the executive, we as parliament must introspect very honestly and very carefully about how we fix our parliament and address its failings over the last eight years to affect oversight. We must firewall this parliament and our institutions to protect them from this ever, ever happening again. In this blush of new dawn, we mustn't be lulled into complacency or hypnotized and charmed into naivety. You're very charming, the ladies tell me. We must learn the hard lessons from Zuma years and ensure that we hold President Ramaphosa accountable. It is the very best service that we can do for our people and it's the very best service we can do for you and your government. If we do not learn from the mistakes of the past, we will condemn to repeat them. And there were some very interesting speakers today. I noticed the Honourable Sisulu's done a runner after I'd delivered a speech like that today. I also wouldn't be here for this week. But if that was a job interview, Mr. President, I think it crashed and burnt. She fluffed it. It was all over the road. And she was very unsettled and very uncomfortable. But it must be hard going from being the biggest cheerleader for the Zuma administration to now trying to navigate this new environment. She even got swept by one of her own members, Mr. Giant Hugh, picked her out for her fake news about, uh, about Mr. Peter and Doro. But you know what? I think that uh, I don't often agree with the Chief Whip, but I think that he was right in his tweet of the 16th of October last year when he wrote, and I quote, that the Honorable Sisulu was politically immature and disappointing. Quote, <laughs> she's lost her marbles, unquote. All I can say is amen to that. She defended state capture today, and I would be aware, Mr. President, because there's some people that are out there, and they're now being called Ramaposas. They pretend to be with you, but actually they're working very hard against you. So watch out for the Ramaposas. They, they're after you. Mr. Jainchi, well, you know, he was the MEC of planning in the Western Cape, and if you want to ask why there was no plans in place for the drought, I think we should start with you, sir. That's the genesis. But look at the Western Cape's unemployment figures. 19.5% in the, in the uh, quarter report, report in December last year. What was the national average? 26.7%. People in the Western Cape know that under the DA government, you've got a better opportunity to find work, you have a better opportunity to get, a, to get ahead. And let's talk about the facts about Eitzig. Eitzig, the MEC of Education in the Western Cape, has tried to close the school. But you know what, colleagues? It's Mr. Tony Ehrenstruck and his colleagues in the ANC that are doing everything they can to keep this uninhabitable school open. Those children should have been moved to Ravensmead, where there's a 97% pass rate. Their lack of progress is directly related to you, Mr. Jainchi, and your colleague, Mr. Ehrenstruck. Shame on you. The Honourable Mocheka came here to talk about education. She, she spoke a lot about how it's working and how great it's going and what she's planning on doing. We're 75 out of the 76 countries in the OECD rankings, 134 out of 138 in the World Economic Forum rankings. The TIMS shows our numeracy and literacy is shocking. Progress in the pearls, we lost out of 50 countries. 78% of grade four pupils cannot read or comprehend. And yet, we are held hostage by Satu your own reports tell you that, but you refuse to act against them. And you're trying to now talk to us about the fourth industrial revolution. You throw out all these slogans and all these meaningless jargon, where the truth of the matter is that your system has not prepared our learners for the second and third revolution, and you're already jumping on to the fourth revolution. So please, when you come here and repeat those slogans and jargon in that wooden, perfunctory manner, please understand the children at home who have not benefited from the proper education system will hold you and this government accountable for it. The Deputy Minister of Correctional Services, I don't know what he's doing here, he should be out there building more prisons. We're going to need a hell of a lot more of them soon when these Zuptas and Zuptas and Zoomers start having to go to jail. There's already, already overcrowding. There's going to be a lot more space to fill there when these people start to fall. I'm very glad a few people have, uh, have dusted off their NDP as well, which seems to have been uh, very bland for the last few words. But Mr. Pre Mr. President, courage, as Maya Angelou writes, is the most important of all virtues. 
because without courage, you cannot practice any other virtue consistently. You're going to need courage to stand up, not only to the ticks that have existed off this government for the last eight years, but the real test of your courage is whether you can stand up to your own associates in the ANC, whether you can put party, uh, put state before party, country before party, and stand doing for what's right ahead of your own party's interests. And so you've been dealt a very bad hand by your party. I know you want a new deal, but the biggest problem you have is that the ace in your pack is actually a joker. Thank you. Thank you.